Hey developers, today we're going to look at Inkline, which is a modern UI UX framework for Vue.js designed for creating flawless responsive web applications. That's the tagline. I've never heard of Inkline. Someone told me about it. So I thought I'd, today I would just go ahead and go through it and show you how to set it up and show you what it's all about. So let's begin. Hey, and if you don't know, my name is Eric. I'm a full stack software developer. I'm also the author of a few books. If you guys like these type of videos, make sure you click that like button and click that subscribe button. That really helps me out. So I've done a number of these videos where I look at different frameworks. You might remember I did one on Quasar, Vuetify, and a few others, Vuezax. And I think this ink line is a little bit different. It's not a material design component framework, and it's a little bit smaller. If you look inside GitHub, you could take a look here. You know, they have used by 18, watching six, 302 stars. So it's not a huge framework. It's pretty new, I would say. I mean, it's actively being developed, which is great, um, by Alex Grozav. And so uh, I just wanted to kind of go through it and show you guys what it's all about. They say they, they focus on responsiveness, modular, mod, being modular, mod, modern, form validation, customizable. I know some of the frameworks I've looked at have form validation, a lot of them don't. So it's kind of something different. Let's uh, let's jump in here. So if we click on get started, this is how we install it. So to install it, you can click on the installation and follow these steps. Now, for the sake of this video, I went ahead and did all these beforehand and here's my app already running. But essentially I followed these steps. I did the view CLI and created a new view app, you can see here. And then I ran this npm install. And after that, I went into the main JS file and I added this import for this inkline source main. And also I added the inkline validation, which well, I'll show you guys a little bit later. And then you just use the view use. That was essentially it to get up and running. Oh, one other thing it recommends you to do if you're using view CLI is to create the view config file and put the transpile dependencies inkline inkline, which I did. And then I also installed the SAS and SAS loader because uh, I was getting an error as soon as running it. So it recommended to do this. So I ran npm install tacd node SAS SAS loader. If I, I think if I would have created the view CLI app with SAS, I wouldn't have had to do this, but I went ahead and did it. And now this is up and running. I have the an empty project here. I deleted all the basic hello world stuff that comes with it. And uh, now we're ready to go. Now it does say you can do some tree shaking. We're not going to worry about that. But if you were looking to save some space, you can put in just the components you're using. And it looks like it has support for Nuxt as well. But we're just using Vue CLI, so we don't need to worry about that. So first glance at looking at the documentation, it looks pretty familiar what you've seen in other view component frameworks like Vuetify and Quasar, we have the grid layout, this 12 column grid layout, and you can use these I dash. Looks like everything in Inkline has this I dash syntax for it. So they have containers, rows, and columns. I usually think every time I look at this grid layout, I don't, it's good for people who like to use it, but for me, I just stick with good old fashioned Flexbox and grid. Those work great for me, so I don't need to use this. It does have a whole utilities library at the bottom. So you can do like borders, even has a clear fix, colors. So you can do background primary. Let's let's do that. So I'm going to go into my hello world. I don't have anything in here. I'm gonna save it and refresh it. Let's put some text in here. Test. All right. Here it is. So you can see the background primary is blue. So that, yeah, that's working as expected. You have display embed. It looks like it has its own flex utilities. So this kind of reminds me a little bit of Tailwind CSS. Obviously Tailwind has a ton of utility CSS libraries. This just has a handful, but it looks like you can make flex containers. You can do small, medium, large for different screen sizes. You can change the flex direction by putting underscore flex dash direction dash row. So I could see definitely if you're getting really good at this framework, 
this component framework, you could just use all these utility libraries. It might make it a little easier. Looks like they have text. Oh, you can do text justify. Oh, here's like text alignment stuff. You know, back to flex again. Text wrapping. You can even do floats for those people who are still using floats. If you are, I'm sorry, but I guess it has floats for utility libraries for that. All right, so that, that's enough of the utilities. Let's go back and take a look at what else it offers. It has a little bit of typography, so you can, looks like you can add in ink line headings. All HTML headings H1 through H6 are available. Um, I guess this is a certain type of, oh, so you can, can, you can do different configurations in your SAS file using dollar sign font family primary base if you want to use those different fonts that it comes with. Uh, you can, it does ta tables, so I'm going to just copy and ta paste this. You do you use i-table. Let's see here. So you can see the syntax. It's pretty simple. i-table, and then you do just like a normal table with t-head, tr's. So you just prefix that. You just put this, you just surround it in the i-table component. And here, here it is. Yeah, looks like a table. It's nice and evenly distributed here. Looks good. It looks like you can even examples for just like inline and multi-line blocks of code. Yeah, it's kind of interesting if you're just like trying to paste some code in there. You can use that. So let's go on. Here's your form checkboxes. Yeah, looks nice. It's a little blue checkbox. You can make even bigger group sizes. Uh, it looks like you, oh, like this says returns, you can return check basketball. Now let's take a look at this. So let's go back here. And here's our check boxes. And I guess we need to add in return checked. So we'll add a return value here. Actually, we'll add a data object. And then from there, We'll move that in there. And I guess we need to add this checked. All right, so yeah, here they are. Football, bas basketball, all right, yeah, nice check boxes. Let's see, what else do we got here? Our inputs, that looks like a little bit nicer input. Disabled states, or you can add this little prefixes for things, prefix and suffix if you want. That's you know a little nice. Here's your radio buttons, number inputs. Oh look, this is kind of neat with the number input. You can put the minus on one side and plus on the other. Uh, forms. You can put it all in one form. You can do this i dash form, and it has this. You can return these values here. You can do form groups. Uh, let's see here form validation. This is kind of interesting. This is why. I installed this, you have to install this ink line validation. And then you can add schemas. So the form validator schema defines the form input fields, groups, and how they work together. So here's an example of one where you have to put a valid enter a value in. So let's try that out. So um actually. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and delete this. Don't really care. Here's our form schema group. And we'll look at the JavaScript. So we need to add in this form in here. This this dot dollar sign form. Let's see if I copy that right. So look at you do this dot dollar sign form and then you set the input value John Doe and you put the validator so this is required so it being, you have to, it has to be required, otherwise you get an error. And you put uh, use this i dash input, and you do dollar sign scheme or excuse me colon schema, and the form input form input value, and you have a placeholder. So with all that together, so now if I delete all this, yeah, please enter a value for this field. So yeah, it seems to be working. Um, it looks like it's checking for white space. If you bunch a bunch of white space, it's trimming it. So you still get please enter a value for this field. So, you know, that's nice. I'm sure you can overwrite the please enter a value for this field somewhere. I'm sure it's not hard coded in. 
I don't know how to do it though. It's probably here in the documentation somewhere. Looks like the following keywords are reserved for validation purposes. So keep that in mind. Input default values. So it looks like you can have, here's your HTML placeholder. So here's the message. So I guess right here we can add a message. So instead of putting right next to the rule, so here's the rule, put comma message. We'll put in, I don't know, input is wrong. Let's see if that works. Now, if I go back to the ink line, I delete everything. Now it says input is wrong. Okay, so this is really customizable. It seems pretty simple to use. Uh, you know, I like it so far. You can also probably create your own custom validators. I mean, obviously, if you're looking for the best sort of uh, this, this the best sort of one out there is there's these uh, a number of view validation libraries. View Viewlidate, I think, is one of them. I should really do a video on them. You may want to look for that. But if you want to kind of everything in one component library, this is doesn't look too bad. Now let's look the kind of the probably the heart and soul of this library is looking at these components. So we have the alert components. Looks nice. We have badges. We can do a breadcrumb with the slashes, buttons. I don't know. Let's take a look at what a button looks like. So you just do I dash button. So I'll just add it underneath the form here. Cool, yeah, that's what an I button looks like. Like it has a little bit of a hover state to it too. Oh uh, yeah, we got a oh we got spinning loaders. Yeah, little loader spinners. It seems like all everything for these spinners and everything are really easy to do. Like this one, you put I dash loader. So here's the spinning loader. Yep, here it is. Uh, it has media. Let's see, media objects. Um, provide you flexible component. That's interesting. Uh, it has a nav bar. Yeah. Oops. Looks like it. Okay. Here it is. Yep. Simple nav bars you can add in. You can also do a light and dark variant. Yeah, it's sort of like bootstrap. This looks very bootstrappy in some things. Uh, popovers. Let's see. Okay. That's nice. Here's your modals. Every framework has to have a modal. All right. I mean, it all looks pretty, pretty good. I mean, it's it's simple, it's customizable. Okay, well, I think that's enough for today. I just want to kind of give you guys a, a quick sh uh, a quick view of how this framework works. Uh, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment below. And also, I'd like to let, like to ask you guys what you want me to do next. What view framework or view components? Leave a comment below. Let me know what I should record next. I really appreciate it. Thanks.